this question here is on polynomials under factor theorem it says if 2x minus 1 and x plus 2 are factors of f of x equal p x cubed plus x squared minus qx plus 2 find the values of p and q so we apply the factor theorem which says that if f of x has a factor x plus a then f of negative a will be equal to zero so given that f of x equal p x cube plus x squared minus q x plus 2 then f of 1 over 2 should be equal to 0 because 2x minus 1 is a factor from this if 2x minus 1 is a factor then f of 1 over 2 is equal to 0 how did you get a 1 over 2 you can solve for 1 over 2 by equating the you can solve for x by equating 2x minus 1 to 0 to get 1 over 2 so whatever we see x here we will put 1 over 2 and that is what we are getting here then we need to simplify it 1 over 3 1 over 2 cube is 1 over 8 times p will give us p over 8 and 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4 then we simplify so the next thing we do is multiply through by 8 the LCM and we simplify further to get p minus 4q equal negative 18 by rewriting the equation in the standard form for linear equations simultaneous linear equations in two variables so with this what we can do next is to form the next equation by using the second factor so if x plus 2 is a factor then f of negative 2 should be equal to 0 so wherever we see x we put negative 2 and we simplify to get this so we further simplify and rewrite it in the standard form to obtain negative 8p plus 2q equal negative 6 since there is 4q here it is good for us to multiply it through by negative 2 to obtain 16p minus 4q is equal to 12. Then this time what we can do is to just subtract equation 1 from equation 2 so that we eliminate the q. So when we eliminate q, we are going to get 15p because 15, 16p minus p is 15p. Then we have 12 minus negative 18 will be 30. So p will be equal to 2 when we divide through by 15. So dividing through by 15 is going to give us p equal to 2. So we can now find the value of q by putting p equal to into equation 1, this equation here. So that will give us 2 minus 4q is equal to negative 18. We group like terms and we divide through by negative 4 to get q to be equal to 5. So that is the value of q and p. p is 2 and q is 5. This question is on relations and functions. Given that f is such that x mouse on 2 x plus m over x minus 3, x not equal to 3, where m is a constant. Find the value of m if f of 5 is equal to 3 whole number 1 over 2. Find f inverse states the value of x for which f inverse is undefined. So let's begin. We're given that f is such that x maps onto x plus m over x minus 3. So, whatever we see x, we put 5. So, 
So f of 5 will be equal to 5 plus m over 5 minus 3. And 5 minus 3 will be 2. So we have 5 plus m over 2. And we're given that f of 5 is 3 and half. So you write through by 2 to get 3 and half times 2 is equal to 5 plus m. 3 and a half times 2 will be 7, equal 5 plus m. So what number will you add to 5 to get 7? That number is 2. Next, the b part. So this is the a part of the question. We found a value of m, m, 2. The inverse of f. So we let f of s equal y. So y will be equal to x plus 2. We then make y the subject in this equation. So we cross multiply. We expand. Then we group like times. So the y comes to subtract the x, y. And the 3x comes to add to the 2. We factor y. Then we divide both sides by x minus 1. Hence, the inverse of f is 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. This inverse will not exist if x is a, if the denominator is equal to 0. That is, if x minus 1 equals 0. And x minus 1 equals 0 means x must be equal to 1. 1 minus 1 will be 0. Hence, the value of s for which f inverse is undefined is x is equal to 1. So that is on relations and functions. This question here is on sets. S-U-R-D-S. Radical equations. Set equations. So we are finding the value of q. Square root of q minus 3 plus square root of q plus 2 is equal to 5. We solve by quoting the equation first. Now, if we square it as it is, it is going to make things difficult for us. And also, do not square individual terms because that is not mathematically correct. So, let's group one of the square roots with a 5 so that we can share the square roots and that becomes easy for us to square so we now square both sides so that the square will get rid of this but this square cannot get rid of this square root so what we have to do is to expand using the identity of perfect square remember that identity a minus b all squared is equal to a squared minus 2 a b plus b squared so that is what we do over here and that's this time we can get rid of the square root with a square now so note the difference, note the difference. These are two terms, and all the two terms are not covered by the root. So you can just get rid of the square root just like that. So this is the correct way of doing it. Now, we have to simplify further. We group the terms, you know, the Q and the Q subtract and will give us zero. 25 and 2 give us 27. Then the 3 will come and add to the 27. Now we can divide through by 10 to get square root of q plus 2 is equal to 3. We have to square both sides again. And that will give us q plus 2 is equal to 9, which will simplify to 7. So the value of q is 7. You can test and see. Put 7 here and put 7 here. So square root of 7 minus 3 square root of 4 will be 2. Square root of 7 plus 2 square root of 9 
will be 3. 2 plus 9 is equal to 5. The equation you are seeing is under quadratic equations and quadratic functions. If alpha and beta are the roots of the equation 3x squared minus 5x equal minus 1 equals 0, find the equation whose roots are alpha minus 1 over beta and beta minus 1 over alpha. So we start with the given equation. So the given equation is 3x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals 0. So comparing it to the standard quadratic function, quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. We obtain a to be 3, then b to be negative 5, then c to be negative 1. Next, we make we we're given that alpha and beta are the roots of this equation, and we're going to use that formula for alpha plus beta. We know alpha plus beta is negative b over a, and that will give us negative of negative 5 over 3, which is 5 over 3. Then we also know that alpha beta will be equal to c over a and that will give us negative 1 over 3. Next, we recall that the equation whose roots are alpha minus 1 over beta and beta minus 1 over alpha is given by x squared minus sum of roots times x plus product of roots equals 0. So, sum of new roots. So, these are the new roots for us. Because for this one, we know that the equation is this. So, we are looking for the new equation whose roots are this. So, sum of roots, we have to add this and this. And product of roots, we have to multiply this and that. So, that will give us what you are seeing here. So, we need to use our algebra to simplify this. And that will give us what you are seeing on the screen. So, when you expand, you are supposed to obtain this. So, this and this will be alpha plus beta. Then, this and this will simplify to alpha plus beta over alpha beta. When you factor the negative out, that's what you will get. So, you can verify it. Then, we expand this and this alpha beta. This and this will give us negative 1. This and this will give us negative b. So, negative 1. So, that will give us neg the negative 2 you are seeing there. Then, this and this will give us positive 1 over alpha beta. Alright, so let's proceed. Let's proceed with the solution. So, we are going to obtain x squared minus 5 over 3. Because 5 over 3 is alpha beta. Which is for this. Then for that alpha beta then alpha beta is negative 1 over 3 negative 1 over 3 negative 1 over 3 as you can see here next what do we do the next thing we do is to simplify algebra so when we simplify 5 over 3 all over 1 over 3 the 3 will get rid of the 3 yeah that will give us 5 over 1 negative negative becomes positive so, 1 over negative 1 over 3 will give us negative 3. And when we simplify further, we get x squared minus 20 over 3x minus 16 over 3 is equal to 0. Multiplying through by 3, we get 3x squared minus 20x minus 16 is equal to 0. So, this is the new equation whose roots are alpha minus 1 over beta, and beta minus 1 over alpha. This question is on partial fractions. 
express 5 into bracket x minus 3 all over 2 x minus 11 times 4 minus 3 x in the form a over 2 x minus 11 plus b over 4 minus 3 x so how do you go about this so we set up the equivalent equation so what we are going to do is that we will collect the LCM on the right hand side and the LCM is 2x minus 11 times 4 minus 3x 2x minus 11 will go into the LCM 4 minus 3x times and then we multiply the 4 minus 3x by a then again 4 minus 3x will go into the LCM 2x minus 11 times so we multiply 2x minus 11 times b by b and that will give us what is here next we equate the numerators because the denominators are the same Now, we have an equation that we need to solve for A and B. From here, you can proceed in different ways. One of the ways that I prefer is that I'll choose values that will form equations, linear equations, that will be easy for me to solve. So, I choose 0 first, when x equals 0. We get 5 times 0, which is 0 minus 15, we get, we get negative 15. Then 3 times 0 is 0, so we get 4a here. Then 2 times 0 is 0, so we get negative 11b here. So that gives us equation 1, because I'm expecting another equation. Next, I'll choose another value for x, when x equal 1. So when x equal 1... This is what I'll get when I put one here I'll get 5 minus 15 when I put one here I'll get 3 so 4 minus 3 when I put one here I'll get 2 so 2 minus 2 into equation 1 a yeah I'll put 9b minus 10 that is what I did and now I'll expand and simplify we put b equal 1 here and that will give us 9 times 1 minus 10 which is equal to negative 1 so 5 into bracket x minus 3 over 2 x minus 11 times 4 minus 3 x is equal to negative 1 because the a is negative 1 all over 2 x minus 11 plus 1 because b is 1 all over 4 minus 3x so when we simplify this we will get what is here so that is partial fraction for you